to share his podium with eminent experts and leaders in the field of geoint and geoint infrastructure. I would also like to compliment Geospatial World for taking this initiative to conduct this conference come exhibition on Geo Intelligence Strategy, bringing together experts from all across the world, covering all aspects of this critical field, including not only the armed forces, but policy makers, government agencies, industry and academy. I would also like to congratulate the organizers on a most appropriate choice of topic for the seminar that is Indo-Pacific Geo-Intelligence. The Indo-Pacific region stretching from the US Pacific coastline to the east coast of Africa is home to more than half the world's people, nearly two-thirds of the world's economy and seven of the world's largest militaries. The growing importance of the oceans has given a new momentum to the Indo-Pacific as a geo-strategic construct. The Indo-Pacific region will shape the trajectory of the global politics for most of the 21st century. This is the region where today's great power competition is playing out. Given China's expansionist tendencies in the Indo-Pacific region, and with all major players like the US, United Kingdom, Australia and the European Union making Indo-Pacific the pivot for their foreign defense and security policies, the growing significance of this region is clear. The growing importance of the region is also evident from the various policies and initiatives like the Free and Open Indian Ocean Initiative by the Japanese in 2016, the IPOI by the Indian Prime Minister in 2021, and the IPF initiated by the US in 22. The Indo-Pacific, without doubt, will very much be the fulcrum around which countries will reorient and realign their policies. The exploitation of the ocean resources in the region, coupled with the difficulties in establishing maritime boundaries amidst a complex maritime geography, having the potential to turn simmering disputes in this region into flashpoints for, multi, for military confrontation is imminent. The region is spatially immense as it is covered by two of the world's largest oceans and some of the most actively disputed maritime boundaries. All these attributes considered, it becomes evident that a considerable amount of surveillance, monitoring and exert and oversight is essential. The predominance of the maritime domain in the Indo-Pacific is such that interchanging Indo-Pacific geoing or maritime geoing may not be too far off the mark. A few characteristics of the maritime domain that makes it unique are first, it is immensely large. Secondly, it has traditionally been unregulated, homogeneous and inherently anarchic, permitting free and unsupervised transnational movement across the global commons. Thirdly, the points of interest at sea and in the maritime domain are numerous. Just narrowing our focus on a part of the Indo-Pacific, that is the Indian Ocean region, in just the last year, as far as the data available to us in the IFC Iowa, nearly 1,45,000 vessels operated here, with many ships making multiple transits. The average number of vessels observed in the Iowa every day crosses 30,000 to 15,000. Any one of them could be inimical to our national interests. Also, operating in this vast geographical expanse are over half a million fishing vessels, almost 100 warships of extra regional navies, and numerous other dark vessels which do not transmit on AIS. Add to this the various maritime security challenges that are routinely encountered on the seas of the region, be it piracy, an armed robbery, contraband, and drug smuggling illegal, unreported un and unregulated shipping, uh, fishing or irregular human migration and the complexity is evident. Besides, the IOR is also vulnerable to the vagaries of nature accounting for more than 70% of natural calamities occurring in the world. The projected rise in sea level due to climate change and its adverse impact on global population and low-lying states has posed new challenges which we need to be prepared for. 
Consequently, preparedness for search and rescue, tracking of weather system would need to be continually addressed. No surprise then that a comprehensive approach for tackling these challenges through a robust maritime domain awareness remains an underpinning necessity. Geospatial intelligence represents a maritime shift in how we perceive and understand our world. Geoing is a definite force multiplier for armed forces, especially for a Navy. It empowers us to enhance situational awareness across various domains. It equips our defense and intelligence agencies with tools to monitor and analyze activities, detect threats, and devise effective countermeasures in time. Whether it is tracking the movements of adversaries, safeguarding critical infrastructure, or responding to emerging risks, Geospatial intelligence gives us the upper hand in an ever-evolving geosecurity landscape. But one point I must make today is that a large part of the geo and infrastructure in this region is premised towards land-based use. While satellites have emerged as the most effective option for geo and, and the maritime applications thereof to undertake persistent large area oceanic surveillance, it is pertinent to understand that surveillance requirements of the maritime domain are significantly different and unique from terrestrial requirements. Space-based maritime surveillance requires wide swath EOIR satellites with AIS payloads for identification of ships at sea. Multiple sensor correlation, including space-based event for classification and data fusion, is critical to generate pattern of flight data at sea. Co-location of two differently abled sensors in the same satellite adds greatly to the flexibility of its capabilities. Maritime surveillance from space also needs diverse applications of tipping and queuing, inclined orbits for better revisit in the area of interest, faster integration and agile satellite with reduced inter-imaging separation. Attributes like faster data downloading from satellites using geographically dispersed ground stations, availability of data relay satellites for large area coverage and reduced requirement of ground stations are prerequisites of geo in, in the maritime domain. The dynamic nature of maritime operations where a ship can typically travel 500 kilometers a day and is free to move in any direction magnifies the maritime surveillance challenge over a vast expanse such as the Indo-Pacific. In the maritime domain, target coordinates of a ship cannot be collated by surveillance over peacetime and then used a few months later in war. The mobile nature of the medium necessitates persistent surveillance or queuing of satellites and revisits for updates with a network architecture in the ground segment for real-time information to reach the operational commander at sea. It is no surprise then that most advanced navies have employed a large number of satellites primarily focused on maritime surveillance. The challenges are added with adverse weather conditions such as heavy cloud cover or fog which can significantly impact satellite based surveillance and dark sheet detection. Ambiguous signals or overlapping tracks can make it difficult to determine the exact location and identity of ships. Integrating data from diverse platforms and formats poses challenges in terms of data compatibility, processing and analysis. Processing and analyzing the vast amount of data generated by satellites requires advanced machine learning and artificial intelligence techniques. The extracted data and readily understandable information digested from these helps end users such as Navy, Coast Guard, and Marine Police to detect anomalies and threats and act in time to prevent accidents and piracy. The true power of space infrastructure lies in its ability to drive geospatial intelligence strategy. Geoing enables us to fuse geospatial data imagery and advanced analytics to gain critical insights into security threats, environment changes, and socio-economic dynamics. By leveraging these capabilities, we can enhance situational awareness, optimize resource allocation, and enable effective decision-making across the Indo-Pacific. 
the maritime domain is unique and needs a focused look. More importantly, if we were to optimally exploit geoend in the Indo-Pacific, the predominance of infrastructure in the sat satellites with focused payloads for maritime surveillance equipped with tools for analysis of this data to cater for the mobile nature of mobile of maritime surveillance are critical drivers that need attention. To conclude, the Indo-Pacific region stands at a critical juncture where space infrastructure, technologies and geospatial intelligence strategy owns immense promise. By investing in, in space-based assets, leveraging the power of geoin and fostering regional collaboration, we can forge a future of security, stability and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific. The armed forces and the Indian Navy in particular look forward to working jointly with the industry and academia to develop niche capability in this critical path-breaking domain. I am sure the deliberations of this conference and the collective wisdom of all the experts available here would bring in consolidation and convergence of thought and ideas on subjects of immense interest to us all. And these would result in some key lines of effort and takeaways for us to focus on and carry forward. With that, I would once again like to extend my compliments to Geospatial World for conducting this conference. Let us embark on this journey together, united by our shared aspirations and determination to shape a brighter future for a thriving Indo-Pacific.